Here we have our workstation where we do a lot of our projects, and build a lot of things. This is the gear rack where we keep all our gears. Jiu-Jitsu is very important. Uh, my roommate who's also a blue belt, so she trains a lot. She trains like six days a week. This is my roommate. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> this place is great. I love it. Even if I was in the UFC, I'd live here. Uh, I love this place. It's great. I was just watching TV one day and I saw the UFC on TV, and I was just like, oh, you know, I bet I could do that, and it's just something that I got into. And I only was going to do one fight, it was just going to just to see how it is, and I had a couple of amateur fights, and then I turned pro, and then I got committed, I guess, and now here I am, 6-0, <laughs> and been fighting professionally for three years, so. This is a picture of my girlfriend, who died the week of my last fight, so I fought on Friday. And I got the news on Sunday. Yeah. It was definitely the worst time of my life. And she was uh, on a camping trip and she had an accident while she was kayaking. She supported me fighting for a very long time, so. I fought, won, drank a bunch of whiskey. Yeah, so it was a pretty, it was a pretty shitty time. <laughs> you know, now I'm dieting all the time, I'm working out, I'm training six days a week. I don't really skateboard anymore and I don't really hang out with a lot of my friends I used to hang out with, so. It's like a complete lifestyle change. Uh, you fight and then you win, and it's like, oh yeah, like this is what I, you know, this is what it's all about. This is that this that feeling is so great, and it's gone so fast. You know, two months of work for, I mean, my last five fights have been all in the first round under five minutes. So it's like you know, I'm putting in hours for two minutes of of a payoff, and you know, it's like you're just chasing that feeling every time. My first passion. 12 years I've been playing, and then I got to play in school. I actually won a national championship my freshman year, and every every year after that we went to the national championship, except for my senior year. I was a JV coach for two years, but because of MMA, I ended up stopped coaching and pursuing that. Um, and I ended up going out to Ithaca and uh, training out with, with Bomb Squad for three years. And now that I'm back and I want to live in the area and I want to be in the area and try to promote MMA in New York and they're trying to bring it to New York. So I'm like, I'm back in my hometown and, and now that I'm here, I'm definitely gonna show kids and whoever I can the love of lacrosse and what lacrosse is about. There you go. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to do what I love. and. Fighting and lacrosse is what I love, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, yeah, I'm just driving to Triforce, go hang out, beat some people up. I work really early in the morning, I work at like 5 a.m. So it's like I train late, I don't get a lot of sleep. So sometimes I'm like, ah, it's real, you know, hard to wake up and, and go like try to spar. You know, guys are gonna try to knock your face off, so sometimes it's not, it's not ideal, but I, I, I love it. First time I met Eric, well, actually the first time I grappled with him, I knew he was going to be, you know, something special because he's really, really gifted on the ground with his jiu-jitsu. He was just a jiu-jitsu guy when I first met him, and his stand-up was limited. Now he's he's an MMA fighter. He's an all-around athlete, and uh, he's got a good right hand now. He's you know he's a lot tougher for the hit, so he's got a lot more weapons, a lot more things to do. Well, he's been a pretty good jiu-jitsu guy and stuff, but rolling with uh, Eric, he's phenomenal. And it just took my jiu-jitsu game to a whole nother level because I had to stay sharp to be able to stay with him and not get smashed by him. So uh, his jiu-jitsu was very, very good. Yeah, I spar with Eric all the time. You know, he's my main training partner. Uh, we get in every time, and I train with him three times a week. Where can he get better? Just more experience. You know, he's 6-0, he's and oh, and he's doing all the right things to get fights, and now he's taking tough fights. You know, Harley's not an easy fight, but Eric jumped at the chance of that. That's a true fighter. That's a true champion right there. You know, he's not trying to pat his record. Eric's going to be in the UFC someday. You're going to see it. A couple more fights down the line, Eric will be in the UFC.
he's got all the tools. He's like I said, his his stand up's getting better and better. So it's you know, uh, not quite where his grappling is, but it'll be there. Especially working with Diamond Dave. He's got a good team behind him. He's got a great head on his shoulders. He's a smart guy. So you know, the sky's the limit, and he wants it. Well, we were talking about it one day, and uh, we just felt he wasn't getting the fights he deserved. So I came aboard and uh, tried to get him the best fights possible. About um, He's just uh, basically the same kid. I'm just doing things outside the box. He took a Muay Thai fight in a kid's backyard in a 29-28 loss in the decision. But uh, just a great experience for him to go fight in somebody else's backyard like he's going to do on uh, June 12th. And uh, he's been putting in a lot of work, been in the gym, jiu-jitsu, uh, boxing. Uh, you got to be ready for anything. He's working on things that uh, he's not good at. He's been in there with some good guys. Tom Egan, Chip Parlett, our last two fights, uh, two highly ranked guys in their divisions. And uh, a unanimous decision. we're just ready for the next test. Harley Darkheart Beatman. People often have pieces of the puzzle. You can be a great athlete, but you don't have the character or the determination or the heart. You could have, be a great athlete and you have character, determination, and heart when you're in the ring, but you don't have the discipline outside the ring. He has all three of those things. I was most impressed with the way he developed. Um, really, week in and week out, I'd see him go up a notch, go up a notch. I have a heavyweight that he spars with, 260 pounds. And it started out pat sparring, and the heavyweight was really holding back. And now the two of them are getting great work. They did four rounds on Thursday night, pretty much all out. And Harley's right there. What they don't want him to do is give up on something that, that's working real well and, and go to boxing. Boxing should add. It shouldn't take away anything. Right, absolutely. He's very coachable. He's a very solid, good athlete. You don't have to make sure he's doing the things that he needs to be done. He's, he's self-motivated. Yeah, when you say to Uncle Harley, say thank you. So he's doing the running. He's eating the right foods. He's living the right lifestyle. And when you get a guy like that, the sky's the limit. This is definitely like a big make or break fight. You know, he's the number one guy. I want to be the number one guy. I want to get in the UFC, and you got to be able to beat top guys. You can't fight guys that are, you know, three and two and two and five. Like, you got to fight the best guys. You know, you can't be in the best organization without fighting the best guys. And, and when you get there, you want to be ready to, to be there, to stay there. So, uh, this is, I think, the biggest fight of my career. I'm just coming there and I'm gonna do what I prepared to do and win this fight, you know? It's not just another fight, but it's a bigger fight, so you bet you're fighting better opponents. And hopefully this will propel me to like that next level. Every fight in MMA is like the fight, you know, so it's like can't take this one for granted and I'm not going to. No secret that I am very big into grappling and jujitsu and you know I've been working on my stand-up for the last year and a half after coming from like no Santa background whatsoever so I mean I'm, I feel like uh, I'm like a complete MMA fighter now I mean if he tries to take me down that's perfect for me so you know I feel like I can win this fight anywhere yeah I took some preparations obviously he's he's a jiu-jitsu guy so you have to take that in consideration and you gotta you know do you gotta practice jiu-jitsu but um, most people think I you know just stand up but I also like jiu-jitsu I like to wrestle I like to do just, you know, stand-up comes naturally, you know, but wherever this fight goes, I'm going to be ready for it. There's no, like, fight camp for me. I, I train every day, whether I have a fight or not. In my off time, I'm training. I'm sparring once a week. I'm training five days a week. I'm here. This is what I like to do. Uh, I definitely like drinking whiskey, so that's, like, my one downfall. I have a beer sponsor, which makes it kind of hard to, to lay off the bruise, but, uh, you know, like I said, I, I train... Regardless, you know, if I drank the night before or not, or, you know, if I have a fight coming up. It's the same, it's the same thing. This is my life, so. It's definitely a fight I've wanted, and I, I want to test myself, and I think I'm, you know, more than capable of uh, getting it done. I'm ready to go. I'm just ready for anything, and I'm just happy to have the opportunity to fight again. You know, a lot of times, you know, like, you might not want to fight, or guys don't want to fight, and it's just, I'm just happy to fight. You know, like, I don't have anything to say, really, about my opponent. I'm just ready to 
rock and roll. Like I haven't fought in a while, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm, come June 12th, I'm ready to fight. June 12th, catch me in the cage.